Welcome to Simplified Video Creation with Canva. Today we're going to explore how students and teachers can use canva.com to create videos for classroom projects. Take a moment to think about how a video creation project could fit in with your content standards. As one example, the ELA Listening and Speaking Standards asks for students to create engaging audio recordings of stories. Canva could easily be used for this task. Another plus is that if your school has STEM Brain Boosters, students are already familiar with the video creation process, which might speed their learning in this project. Today, we'll be committed, responsible, respectful, and safe as we complete our PD. In Canyons, we want to relate everything back to the MTSS framework. And for us, there are several ways that the Canva video creation project could fit into our instructional priorities. But the one that I selected to focus on today is the instructional hierarchy, acquisition, automaticity, and application. With the instructional hierarchy, we can have many opportunities for feedback and practice as the students learn new content. As the learner becomes more accurate and the skill becomes more automatic, they can feel confident using the skill. Once fluency is obtained, the learner is now ready to be given opportunities to apply the skill in varied real life experience. This is where Canva video creation comes in. Our learning intentions today are to learn how to add and customize video clips, pictures, and sound to Canva templates. I am also learning how to share the finished product with others. You will know that you have learned it when you can instruct students in the creation of videos to communicate clearly and express themselves creatively for a variety of purposes. On our agenda today, we will look at why we might consider using Canva for video creation. We'll look at the steps involved in creating video. We'll, we will see how to create a Canva for Education account. We'll explore templates, add elements, and then share the finished product. Why Canva? Canva is very intuitive, so it's very fast for students to learn and create stunning projects uh, in a very short amount of time. So it reduces the amount of time that students have to spend learning the technology and prioritize the time learning the content that we are trying to achieve or practicing uh, with the content that we want students to learn. With the creation process, we Students sign in using their csdocs.org account, just like teachers would. Both students and staff use csdocs.org to sign in. Everyone already has an account, so they will just go to csdocs, add their csdocs.org email, and then put in their password. Next, we'll choose a template. We'll add elements and share. The main reason that I like using Canva in addition to it being so easy is that there are so many great templates. Currently, there are over 610,000 templates to choose from, so I'll show you how to filter them to make that process a little bit easier. When you first get started with Canva, you'll want to make sure that you've joined the Canyon School District team. When you are in Canva, you should see this little drop down on the left side. You'll see I'm in the app here, but it will look the same on canva.com if you are in your web browser. So you can see that it has this drop down, and then there should be a Canyon School District. By joining the district team, you get full access to all of the templates and premium features within Canva. If you are just getting started with Canva, I would recommend going to canva.com and then choose continue with email. 
you can use this continue with Google after you sign in for the first time, but we've found that it works best if the first time you sign up, you just use continue with email and then put in your csdocs.org account. When you click OK, it's going to go ahead and sign you in. It may ask you to connect to Google, so you can do that if it prompts you, but otherwise, you'll just sign in that way. If you, for some reason, did not create a Canva account previously with, a, with your KenyansDistrict.org email, you can change that. These are the instructions for changing your email address within Canva so that you can join the Canyon School District account. Additional instructions are also found on Canyon's U. All right, so once we are in uh, Canva and we have that district template, or sorry, the district access, we want to sub select a template. Like I said, there are 610,000 templates, so there are a lot to choose from. One thing that I've found that really helps is filtering the results. I like telling students to click on templates from the left menu and then choosing education, and from there, selecting the format that they'd like. Let's go ahead and go over to Canva so we can see what that looks like. This is the home page for Canva. You'll see that there is a templates button here. So we can choose templates, choose education, and then we're going to choose educational video because that's what we're going to work with today. Within educational video, they have a lot of different templates to choose from. Because I'm kind of indecisive, a lot of times I star multiple so that I can come back and pick my favorites. So I'll take a look. If you hold your mouse over the template, it will play the video so you can get an idea of what the movement looks like. But all of these should be video templates that you can use. After you have starred the videos that you like, you can access your starred templates from that left menu. So if we choose starred, I can see any of the templates that I have selected to be starred. We are going to work with this one today as our template. So I'll, I'll choose use this template. You'll notice that the screen looks a little bit different. If you've never worked with video before, you things look pretty much the same, but we have a couple of extra buttons that weren't there before. We have this play button, as well as this line with the triangle on top. This is the playhead, and if I press play, it will play the video for us. So you're, you are most likely used to seeing just pages down here, and instead they are videos, and we can add additional pages to create more scenes in our video. If you would prefer, you can always hit the space bar to start or stop the play function instead of using this button. So now we're ready for the second step in video creation process. Once we've selected our template, we are ready to add elements. There are so many different elements available within Canva. You can add video clips, audio. You can kind of see in the little in the graphic here that the library of stock stock items contains graphics, photos, videos, audio, and the editing tools are really great too. So let's go take a look at some of the different options. Let's say that I am making a presentation on elephants. So I've got my template selected. So I'm going to move down to the next button and we are going to search for an elephant. Now you can see that I have graphics to choose from, photos, videos, or audio. If you do want to narrow your results down, you can change them here. So if I only want to search graphics, I can do so there. Only photos or only videos. One of my favorite things about Canva is the variety of 
photos, elements, and graphics, but I also appreciate the ability to customize them. So let's say that I add this. You sometimes have the ability to edit the colors and it looks like this one will not let me edit the colors. So let's try another one that I might be able to edit the color. So here's an example of one that I have the ability to edit the color. So if I have a specific color scheme that I want to keep for my video, I could change this to match other colors in the document. So maybe I'm going to change that to a small elephant that I'm putting in the corner and I made my purple match. So instead of let's have fun together, let's do let's learn together. So I'm just double clicking on that to change the text. And then let's find a video to place here. So as we look, we can find, and again, if you just hold your mouse over over the video, it will go ahead and play. So let's say we want to do this one. And if I just click it places it on our on our scene for us, but if I wanted to snap into that template, I can drag it over instead. Let's see. Oh, there we go. Uh, it looks like I just had to kind of move it around to get it to stick into that frame to replace. So the first time you'll see it went over the top, but if you move it kind of up towards the top, then it replaced it. So you can see now I have, let's learn about elephants with our little clip there. If I wanted to add some more clips, I could add another page to our video. Let me move me out of the way, but I could add another page to our scene and then add additional videos. So maybe I want to include this elephant, but let's say that I want to get rid of some of this background so it appears to match more. And maybe I want to give it more room so I can add some text to talk about adaptations uh, with the elephant. You can click edit video and under effects, one of the options is a background remover. So if you click background remover, it'll actually remove the background of any image. So now I can use these handles to trim our video a little bit. And then if we want to preview, remember, you can just press the space bar to preview what that looks like. So you can see now I, I have all of the background is gone and I just have the elephant. So this would be a good opportunity for me to add in some text if I wanted to add in a heading and write some facts about elephants on this slide. One thing that you'll notice is a little bit different with the video instead of the pages that you're probably used to working with is the length of slides and working with the timeline. So if I want this to be shorter, because right now it is 25 seconds, it created that 25 second clip because that's how long the elephant video is. I can just take and drag the end in to the length that I want it. So if I want it to be 14 seconds, it is now 14 seconds. And then if I ever want to preview from the beginning, I can move that playhead and tell it to start by just pressing the space bar. So if we are ready, we could go ahead and add some audio into our video. So let's go ahead and go back to elements and I'm just going to go to audio. The software is pretty intuitive in that I can just write kind of a feeling of a song. So we could do happy if we want just upbeat, upbeat music, or if I keep it elephant, 
I can find elephant growls. If you are ready to add an audio track, you will just click and drag and you'll see that that gray bar shows up at the bottom and it says to drag audio or drop audio, drop music here. So I can put it to start kind of at the beginning or if I want to start with the black um, scene, I can just move it there. And then I can change the length of the video. This video is only 4.6 seconds. So if I wanted it to be longer, I could add it again from over here if I want to have another one or a different elephant growl, I could do that. You can also make it shorter, just like I did above in this clip by dragging it to be shorter. If you would like to adjust so that maybe the end of this, you want it to start a little bit earlier. If we click on those three dots, it has the option to adjust. And what I can do is I can drag this so I can start, you can see that there's really no sound and then a little bit of sound. So if I wanna start this where the sound starts, I can just drag it to adjust where that audio clip starts. So now I have our elephant soundtracks on top of our video and text about um, elephants. One thing that's also helpful with the elephants is to filter those as well. So if we go back to elephant, but I want a graphic, and if I definitely would like that graphic to be animated, so have movement to it, I can apply a filter and then it only gives me graphics with movement. So if that's something that your students are interested in, I think a lot of times they'll like the movement that is available. And maybe we can do kind of an alphabet video and have the E there for elephant. In addition to using these elephant these elements on the uh, these stock elements provided by Canva, I have also have the option of uploading my own. You can upload audio uh, or video or images. So it, it accepts a variety of types and you can choose to upload from Google Drive if students want to add photos of themselves. It has the option to record yourself. So you can click that and then it puts a small circle kind of right in this area and it allows the student to talk about their slides as it records their voice and their face. Um, so that can be a good option as well if you want students to narrate their video. There is one last thing that I want to show you about the timeline and that is how to split a clip. So if you have a video or audio, but a scene that you would like to put something different in the middle of it, you will put the playhead where you'd like the scene to split, and then you can right click it and select split page. At that point, you can either add a blank page or you can add a transition. So if I wanna add a page, I could add something different in here. Um, I could put in a different video, I could add different text, but I could create a new scene or I have the option to add a transition. There are many different transitions that you can choose from. And if you hover over them, it gives you a preview of what it looks like on the right. So I think students would have a lot of fun with deciding what transitions to add into their movie. Um, there are a few more notes that I wanted to show you about the audio that you can do. If audio seems really loud for you, you can adjust that volume. So again, I can choose the audio here, and then I have the option of selecting volume here, 
or it will be on this top menu. So I can adjust the, vol the volume there, or I could do a fade in and fade out if, if you wanted to get it, slowly get it louder or slowly soften the music as you go in or out. You can split audio just like we split the clip. So by clicking on the audio, and then we can say split audio. So I could rearrange these and have multiple audio tracks at once or change the order of the audio. So you can see it gives you a lot of flexibility to be able to adjust audio to fit what you need in your video and what you'd like so students are able to be creative. This is what the recording screen looks like that I mentioned to you. If you choose record yourself, you'll be able to select which camera it is using and which what it is using for audio. You do record every, you do one take with all of the recording. So students click to advance the slides and just do one recording per video. All right, so once they are finished with their finished product, there's a couple different ways to share. One of the easiest ways is just to share a link to watch. So they could click share and then under more, there's the option to do a view only link. And so they can choose that view only link and share that with you so that you could watch the video. Um, the share link to watch does the same thing. So you can uh, copy that link and so that the student could share that link with you and you'd be able to view it or view all of the classes. You do have the option to download the video. You could choose to do an MP4. Uh, if there's no sound, you could do a GIF as well, but the MP4 would be the recommended if it has a any sound to it. The last option would be to share with a collaborator. If you have students working together, they could share a link. So they could do anyone with the link and then share the link with their classmate and be able to collaborate on the same document, but on different computers, similar to how Google Docs works, where they're collaborating on the same document. There are many more uh, features within Canva. Rather than demonstrating all of the different features like I've shown you here, one option might be to just put a list of challenges up on the board and then allow students to explore to see what they can find on their own. So you could put something like this, like add a page or transition, add a photo and flip the photo, uh, find a graphic and customize the colors to match it with the rest of your design. So you could allow students to explore and see what they can figure out on their own with minimal uh, demonstration. And then to learn more, another great resource could be to use the Canva Design School if you want to explore more with videos. They have videos for how to add movement, the timeline basics, how to edit, finalize, animate, really everything that you could imagine. My favorite part is that all of the videos are quite short. They're usually about 45 seconds long, so you can learn what you need very quickly. All right, I hope that you were able to get a quick intro to video creation with Canva and would feel comfortable introducing this with students to help them show their learning. I appreciate you coming today. Thanks.